In this video clip, I'll be discussing the four rotator cuff muscles. These muscles are intrinsic shoulder muscles and they're involved in moving our glenohumeral joint. In this animation here, we can see some of the rotator cuff muscles producing lateral rotation of the glenohumeral joint. In addition to producing rotation of the joint, they also help to stabilize the glenohumeral joint. Their tendons merge in with the joint capsule and help to ensure that the head of the humerus stays inside or stays within the glenoid fossa. There are four muscles that make up the rotator cuff. The first one is called supraspinatus. The second one is called infraspinatus. The third one is called teres minor. And the last one is called subscapularis. These muscles are sometimes referred to as the sits muscles because the first letter of each of their names spells out the words sits. And you can see here that I included a small t because this is teres minor, not teres major. Next, I'm going to describe the attachment points and innervation for each of these muscles. In this anterior animation, we can see subscapularis. This is the only rotator cuff which starts on the anterior surface of the scapula. And I'll just outline the muscle here. The muscle is attaching onto the subscapular fossa. It crosses anterior to the glenohumeral joint and attaches onto the lesser tubercle right here. When we pull along its muscle fibers down towards where it starts, this muscle is going to produce medial rotation of the glenohumeral joint. And just like the other three rotator cuff muscles, this particular muscle will help to stabilize the joint. I've now added on the brachial plexus and highlighted here the posterior cord. Coming off the posterior cord, there are two nerves called the upper and lower subscapular nerve, and they're going to supply subscapularis. On the posterior aspect of the scapula, this is where we find the three other rotator cuff muscles. Highlighted here is supraspinatus. This particular muscle attaches to the supraspinous fossa, and if I just tilt it here, we can see better where its tendon actually goes. The tendon crosses uh, the superior aspect of the glenohumeral joint and attaches onto the greater tubercle. This particular muscle is the only rotator cuff muscle that does not produce rotation of the glenohumeral joint. Instead, as we pull along the fiber direction this way, this particular muscle is going to initiate abduction. Therefore, it's a synergist to deltoid. Inferior to the spine of the scapula, we have infraspinatus. Its name, if you look at it, is infra, meaning inferior. Spinatus is referring to the spine of the scapula, which is here. This particular muscle attaches onto the infraspinous fossa, and its fibers go up and it also attach onto the greater tubercle, right here. If we pull along its fiber direction down towards the origin of the muscle, this particular muscle will produce lateral rotation of the glenohumeral joint. Inferior to infraspinatus, we find teres minor. And teres minor starts on the lateral aspect of the scapula, which I'll just outline here. And it also goes up and attaches to the greater tubercle. When we pull along the fiber direction of this muscle, it too will produce lateral rotation. And it also can help or assist in adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Just inferior to teres minor, we find teres major, which I'm just outlining right here. This is not a rotator cuff muscle, but I've just left it on here so that we can see the relationship of teres minor to teres major. Next, I'm gonna add on the brachial plexus so that we can look at the nerve supply for these three muscles. Highlighted here is the axillary nerve. This is one of the terminal branches off the posterior cord, and this particular nerve supplies teres minor, and in addition would supply the deltoid muscle, which would be overlying it. I've now removed supraspinatus and infraspinatus so that we could see the nerve that will go and supply these two particular muscles. Coming off of the superior trunk of the brachial plexus is the suprascapular nerve, and it goes down and gives off branches to supraspinatus and goes around scapular notch and supplies infraspinatus. At the end of this video clip, press pause and try answering the following four recap questions. 